Well, hello everybody, welcome back to Red Tool House. Today, we're gonna to get started getting back to work on the, ch on the chicken church, and we're gonna put some doors on. So last time we worked on the chicken church, we got it sided, we got it mostly weathered in, and then of course, the big C happened. We had a little illness there, we had to take a month, pretty much a month off. But uh, now it's time to get back at it. So we've got four doors on this chicken coop. I don't know, last time we talked about that, that makes it a sedan, right? Yeah. Anyway, four doors. We've got our people door. We've got our nesting box door. We've got our clean out door here at the back. So we can just lift that up and of course just scoop stuff out. And of course the all important pop door or chicken door. So those are the four things we're gonna work on. The pop door, it's actually the least important because I don't know that I'll be closing that much at all. Probably leave it open most of the time since we'll be surrounded with poultry netting and not have to worry about critters coming in. But first thing I wanna do is work on the people door. Now I've gone back and forth. Should I build something? Should I buy something? Blah, 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 blah. And I think I've come to the conclusion. Um, well, I've definitely come to the conclusion because I've already purchased it, but I went to the ReStore and bought an old solid core wooden door, and I'll show you that here in a second. But first I need to get some measurements because I got to cut that turkey down to fit. Wow, there's actually something square in this building. All right, so I made that door opening um, I roughed it, but I realized that I wasn't going to do a pre-hung, most likely. I was either going to build something or buy something that wasn't pre-hung. So I've got a 32 and an eighth by right at six feet. And I made six feet because I'm 6'3", and that way I'll guarantee that I'll always hit the crown of my head every time I walk through the door. So let's go get the solid core door, get some measurements on it, and make sure it's going to work for the amount of cutting we're going to need to do. All right, so a couple days ago, I went to our local restore, you know, the Habitat for Humanity place, and they had a collection of old solid doors here, and was able to find this one. This one is actually 32 inches by 78 inches. So it's close. It obviously needs to lose six inches in height to be able to work for what we need. Now, I'm not gonna cut it off the top because I've got plenty of of the kickboard, the toe board down at the bottom that I could cut out. So since it's a chicken church, we're not just going to take the door and size it and hang it. We actually got to jazz it up a little bit to go with the motif of the chicken church. So let me show you what I got. So a while back, my dad gave me these old bifolds and uh, they actually have, they have two panes of stained glass in them. So we're going to cannibalize maybe one of these, the, the stained glass designs are different. So we may just cannibalize one of them and we're gonna inset these stained glass panes in the face of the door here to uh, really make it look churchy. All right, so uh, it's obviously starting to rain. So we're going to get this loaded up, get it down to the workshop and start working on it down there. So you guys can meet me down there. I'll have to stop real quick and feed some swine first. So I'll catch you down at the workshop. Okay, so we're down here in the messy workshop and I've got the door laid out here. I think the first thing we're gonna do is get it cut to length to make sure we can do that. The width is spot on, 32 is what we need. So we're good to go there, but I need to cut about six inches off this length. And you can see somebody's already cut a lot off this door and maybe had it in an attic or a small space like that because you know, that's not the typical door height. Alrighty, so now we have the squattiest door in the world. <laughs> yeah, it looks odd. 
Well, this is going to be our top. The larger panel is going to be our top. And I want the door to swing in. So this will be the inside of the door. So I'm going to, want to flip it over because we want to do our cut uh, or we want to do our layout based on the outside, the inside, where obviously we won't be as pretty, but is what it is. If I was making a door from scratch, obviously, we would recess the glass panels in the center panel before we put everything together, our style and rail. But uh, obviously I'm not doing that, so we're just gonna cut a hole, slide the, you know, make a little picture frame, slide the uh, glass panels in, and then uh, kind of lock it down that way. So one side will be cosmetic, the other side, yeah, not so much. But it's a chicken coop, right? All right, so we need to cannibalize our glass panes. I'm just gonna use one set, again, since they don't match, and four would look kind of weird. So I'm just gonna cannibalize one. I'm kind of looking at it, see if there's a way I could incorporate it without cannibalizing, just taking the hinges off. But I, I think it just makes sense to take it apart and just use the glass itself. Okay, there we go. I think that's just sexy enough. Well, I can't say sexy for a chicken church, can I? I think that's just pristine enough or formal enough to be a good chicken church front door. So I did a little caulk in there, glued, uh, nailed, Brad nailed. So we'll let that dry, of course, overnight. And then we'll uh, carry on with putting the hinges on and actually getting it hung up at the chicken church. We are gonna paint this, so if you're wondering with all my Sharpie marks, we are gonna paint it when we paint the rest of the church. Well, all right, it's time to install some doors here. Got them all made, uh, but we're gonna start smallest to the largest. So we're gonna start with the pop door, so the chicken entrance door first, and it's actually kind of simpler to more complicated as well. So uh, let's start with the pop door. All right, so the pop door is really kind of simple because I'm really not gonna use it a lot, as I mentioned already. So what I have is just a plywood door with a handle and then just made down at the shop these two L-shaped pieces of wood that will act as tracks for the door just to slide down in. So all I need to do is just attach those to the 2 by 4s with some screws and we'll be good to go. So there we go, just a simple lift up. And I can obviously just set the door aside. Uh, about 99% of the time that'll be the case, but for just some reason I need to close them up because I'm doing fence repair or something, then just drop it in place there. So that was easy. And yes, if you're wondering, cat food dish, heated blanket, um, this has become the new cat hangout. So uh, Kelly has commandeered the chicken church for cat activities for now. 
I guess I think they like the vantage point, you know, when you turn around here and you look out the door. You have a pretty good vantage point of a lot of the stuff around the house. So they like it. And before the cats moved in, the squirrels um, evidently were hanging out here. I guess they'd come in, get out of the rain, eat some hickory nuts and carry on. Okay, so now we want to do the clean out door behind me here. And we'll use some hinges for that. So this one here, let's get out of the sun, goodness. So this one here is pretty basic too. It's just a 60 inch by 12 inch opening. So I took two poplar boards, glued them together, reinforced them with some uh, small strips there to tie them all together. And of course this is just going to hang loose. This again will be on the inside of the poultry netting. So being locked down, being super tight, isn't going to be that critical. But we're just going to put some strap hinges here on the top and let them hang down. And actually, I didn't buy just any strap hinges. How about the sexy black? So um, there's a little black detail on the outside of the church. Look really nice. Okay, door number two installed. So obviously we'll be able to lift that up, sweep out all the chicken poop and stuff into the yard and have a clean coop. Close the lid, lock her down. All right, door number three, nesting box door. So the plan with the nesting box, of course, is nesting box on the inside, door on the outside, so Kelly and the boys can come up, open the door, access the eggs without having to walk in and walk through a bunch of crap. Uh, this is the outside, so this is not inside the protected area. So this door will need to be a little bit more secure. This is almost a two by two opening. It's a little bit wider than it is tall. So what I did is just taken some poplar, made a kind of like a gate door, uh, did some Z bracing on it, brought those Z braces in so I can have a place to put my hinges and uh, be able to do the door latches and stuff. So you'll see method to my madness when I put it in here. Just a bit outside. Need to get the fine adjustment tool. Well, I said I wanted it to be secure, but I don't want it to be that secure. <laughs> we still have to be able to get it open. So we're going to shave a little off. Methinks the church nor the door is square, or at least square in the right direction. Same direction. All right, so that looks like that's a little tight, and it is, but this poplar is definitely gonna shrink. So uh, when it shrinks, we'll have more play there. 
Now, obviously a door just opening and falling all the way down isn't what we want. I want to give Kelly or the boys, whomever, the opportunity to have a little table here. So when they come to get eggs, they can put the egg basket down uh, on the table and be able to collect eggs and then close everything back up. So what I have is a piece of chain. This is actually the safety chain off the PTO shaft cover of one of my PTO driven uh, tractor tools. Nobody uses those shafts anyway, right? Those covers, so we robbed the chain. Now, actually, it was, it was an extra one. It was damaged, uh, so I bent the hook back out, and we're going to use it to hang our door. Quad hoppers out of the way. Come on. Ta-da! All right, and of course, just to keep it latched, just a tip, simple twist block here. So we can access it, lock it down. Now that's just tucked to a piece of trim. <laughs> so I'm gonna put some screws in that to uh, keep it just from popping off with a minute. Okay, so three down, one to go. And so the door's ready, at least I think it is. I haven't dry fit it yet, so we'll see how that goes. But it's such a beautiful day, and we're about to get three days of nonstop rain that I'm going to go work on some other stuff. And, you know, obviously I can hang a door in the rain because I'll be on the inside. So um, when you see me again, it'll probably be dreary, and I'll probably be wearing a little bit more clothing, and we'll get this door hung. Be on the outside and hold it so I don't obviously push it through when it falls. Take, take oh, that's perfect after your bath. Hey. This should be a boy. Maybe come to us. I'm going to pick up a door and check it back to you. A little bit more. Yes. Swing, isn't it? Like me. <laughs> you want me to hold it? No, no, no. Now I got two screws in it. You got it crooked. Come it's on, fine. dude. Is any more crooked than the rest of the places? Crooked. <laughs> you got a straightage right there. To take it off to paint it anyway, so I'll line it up there. Well, all right, so there we go. We've got our door in with our stained glass windows, so giving it that uh, churchy feel. Does it feel like a church to you, Kim? Exactly like a church. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> Very church like. And I think we finished up just in time because got those ominous skies rolling in. So we're going to wrap up. So that is four doors on our chicken coop, which makes it a what, Kelly? A sedan. Yeah, a chicken sedan. <laughs> All right. So obviously she's going to need a, uh, a um, coat of paint. And we'll get to that. I'm not sure we'll be able to do that this winter with the uh, all the wet and the cold, but yeah. we'll just watch the weather and see how it goes. Um, 
One thing I've noticed with our brooder, and Kelly even pointed out as well, we may have to make a little bit of an eave here, a little overhang, just to keep water off that door, you know, because technically that is an interior door, and I don't want it going back in under the jam. That's what's happening with my brooder. My brooder door is west facing, which is where all of our storms come. Fortunately, this is south facing, so the storms are gonna hit the side more, but uh, definitely need to have that added protection. So we've got our egg door, egg access door. We've got our clean out door, which we're leaving open. Kelly was cleaning it out, of course, uh, but we're gonna leave that open. Actually, no, we're gonna close that, aren't we? Because we've got this door for the cat to jump up in and she's athletic enough that she can hop up in that. So that'll give her an opportunity to hang out for now until uh, we get chickens in it, but we're close, getting dangerous close to getting chickens moved in here. We just got to do some interior work, get the uh, nesting boxes built, get the roost bar built, and put that shiplap siding that I milled up on the inside so we can have that closed off more. All right, well, appreciate everybody watching. Take care.